I really like B6-11 for the um, for the threads. We have an M20, it's not specifically called out, so we'll go with an M20 by 2. And um, on the, the geometry, I've done both of these as revolves. Um, I think I'm going to extrude this out and then use the whole wizard and a couple of uh, combinations, see what we, um, what we run into. So the first step will probably just be a cut extrude. And um, the the second step, we'll see what the um, the whole wizard does with that threaded depth, and then we'll just have to manage where we put those um, those geometries. So, see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Yeah, the other screen's a little a little more. So. Um, the drill point is not specifically called out, but usually we would go to 118, so 59 degree half angle. And the um, um, trade-off is even if it's 135 degree um, drill point, it won't um, um, it won't affect you know on the cam. It would look at the drill point and maybe this is a little wider, and we don't get exactly to that shoulder, but a little extra relief. If a little extra relief is a problem, then we have to account for it. So we're going to go new, pick our part metric. And uh, let's see, I was doing the 2D, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the 2D to 3D so that it is uh, a little more screen space. And we can stretch that out just a bit. All right, so on the uh, the top plane, We'll get into our sketch, and that looked a little big, so we want to go with the diameter of 36. And then we're going to extrude this out to 100 millimeters. And it doesn't, um, doesn't really matter. If I knew I was going to do these parts on the lathe, I might put them in the orientation. Um, but you don't often, uh, even with the CNC, you don't often get them where you um, where you would prefer. What's the best orientation to visualize the machine processes? All right, so we have a drill point, and that f step is um, doesn't look like it's called out. We have the 22, we have the M20. Um, Going to a to a chamfer. I think I've done that before as like a 16 millimeter. So we'll see what it looks like. So picking the face, and we would go to the hole wizard. If you haven't started using the S key or looked at the S key, just be aware that with the S key we'll do this little pop-up in the hole wizard and some of the commands will be right there. So we go into the hole wizard and we're doing a simple hole. And see metric drill sizes. We're already at 12, so we shouldn't have to scroll too far. 16 millimeters. And then, well, the depth is given by all of those numbers. So 21.5 plus 24 plus 28 plus 4, 77.5. All right, now our little icon here is saying to the shoulder. So with a 118 degree drill point, it will calculate the full full point depth. All right, and so where the um, to the to the tip is more of uh, an interest is if I didn't want this to break through, that there was you know it's going to be close to some geometry, and then there would be a problem with um, generating the the rest of um, uh, the the wall if it breaks out. All right, so let's go ahead with the 22 millimeter, and it's gonna go. We'll just do that one as a regular sketch, and we'll just kind of mix these. It doesn't, um, since it has a shoulder, the shoulders present the um, the issue of we would either need to um, to mill this or bore this uh, flat bottom drill. It's not tight enough tolerance to do a ream, so. We'd want to um, kind of think through that process and being kind of small, small boring bar getting in there and possibly even the thread 
it would um, it would have some challenges. So um, we just want to uh, to make sure we're making good decisions on you know four inch long part to almost two inches deep on the um, on the depth. So and you know our <clears throat> extrude cut. So 21.5 and 24 puts us up at 45.5. But there I go doing math in my head again. So let's let's do it the easy way and, and have, uh, have the software do the math. All right, so for our depth, then it gets um, a little interesting on the on the thread for the uh, the hole wizard here. We want to do the threaded hole. And the problem is that we can't really tap to that depth. If it was, if that was a critical depth um, for the engagement of the uh, the mating part, then we'd want to look at making that 16 millimeter a little bit bigger. All right. So the M20 by two, we have fine or maybe extra fine, fine and coarse. So M20 by two, a blind in condition. Well, let's just see what up to next looks like. All right, so if I control one, and it's not giving me a preview yet. And um, as an optional, I do want to talk about the uh, the pipe threads because it defaults to this uh, remove thread, or the numbers reflect that remove thread. So I want to remind myself to uh, to talk about those. So let's look at the uh, the position. And up to next, it found its way all the way through. So on this depth, then we're basically telling it to go 28 and 28. So that didn't look good. So if I go 28 on the whole depth and 28 on the thread, well, it still stops kind of, uh, kind of short, but there is a step there. So even with that drill point, and our um, geometry drill point going a little bit deeper, that doesn't look too terrible. But if that had to be a flat bottom, then that's a little bit of, a, of an issue. So those are some of the decisions that we have to make while we're going through this process. All right, so again, the, um, uh, if I tap this, the lead on the thread, I'm probably gonna lose one or two threads. And the three millimeter by 45 chamfer on the mating part probably gives me enough. So depending on what we're doing here, what we need for this geometry, if, um, if that is an issue, then one of the things we could look at is the custom sizing and go to 180 and flatten it out. All right, so... The, the check then becomes, let's go from there to there, and it calculates out to the four millimeters, so we're okay with that. All right, so the whole point of doing the whole wizard is that we get the, the cosmetic thread, we get our geometry, we can manipulate it a little bit, we can make some decisions on those, uh, those other shapes. All right, so we're going to do the threads, and you can pick the um, the six millimeter, which um, has always been interesting because the width of the grooves is five millimeters, so it's not like they really fit in there, and they're not showing these as modified parts with um, um, any kind of like nylon tip or brass tip that would ride in there, being a little bit smaller. So. Um, you know, at six millimeters on the thread, we could certainly um, turn a little bit of a, of a, a tip on it. Um, or um, when it's uh, going into those grooves on the mating part, there is the, um, uh, the issue of it um, over tightening and deforming that so that they don't come apart. So they're not saying that those grooves are for O-rings and they line up pretty darn close to the um, uh, to these threaded holes so you know there's some uh, some question as to what they actually do so in the optional we'll um, we'll take a look at some of those items all right so first first way and the best way to control especially if you're indexing a hole wizard item is to highlight the plane 
click on the plane and drag it. We're going to go to a parallel condition and the second reference will make it tangent. All right, so that gives me a plane tangent to the cylinder. And once again, right plane, hold down the control, left click on the plane and drag it out. That'll get it starts. That's the same as going to the plane and picking right and picking tangent. So you still have those same processes, but um, the click drag is, is going to be faster. All right, so onto the whole wizard. I'll go into the position. Oh, it didn't grab it. So existing 2D th sketch, 3D sketch. So the existing 2D sketch is if we had um, uh, locations or points um, defined, it would pick some of those up. So I was reading in the what's new that there were some uh, additions to that geometry. All right, so the type and M20 is going to be pretty big for uh, for that guy. So let's go back to the M. Uh, M6 by 1 as a standard um, metric tap. Um, so we can then go up to next. Uh, we'll go back to the standard 118 on that one. Up to next, up to next on the thread. And did I miss it? All right, so I'm looking for that to be vertical to the origin. And the smart dimension to the top is the 21.5. And we can go ahead and accept it and then hide the plane. All right, so that puts puts the threaded hole through the, uh, the side. And there's always like a little bit of a, an elliptical fish mouth thing going on there. The other nut so desirable but want to make you aware of it and introduce um, some more of the 3d sketch 3d sketches have that challenge so um, we're going to do the same whole wizard but i'm picking the 3d sketch but it's the same as going into um into the 3d sketch but anytime we pick a non-planar surface and our feature goes to whole wizard the position should default you know well, it picked something, so we'll see. All of our numbers should be okay. So going to the position, you know that you're in a 3D sketch when your cursor says XY, and your origin is kind of this floating, um, and there's, there's a technical name for it, but it floats, <laughs> the floating origin. All right, so this is able to go anywhere on the cylinder, and it will follow it around and remain... Um, coincident to the origin, the problem becomes how do we make this orientation? So where the plane makes pretty good sense, or if I needed it at a specific angle, it would be a lot easier for it to make sense. Um, this, we're going to find the front plane and control select our point and put that point on the plane. So that gets me in position that way. And one of the downsides of the 3D sketch then is if I go from, say, that face, oh, it did pick it that time. Uh, let's escape back one. You don't want to pick the origin in this case because you're only going to get the angle. We can uh, pick a plane and it's going to um, go perpendicular. And then the other option is I would just draw a construction line from point to point and label it the 24 millimeters. All right, so it's not terrible. It's just not as intuitive as our uh, uh, as doing the plane and putting in our normal geometry. All right, so let's save this, and we're going to go to the drive and get to my models and create the new folder for the um, for the assignment. P6-11. And we'll just call this the um, threaded body. Or whatever name you want to want to give it. Alright, so that gives us our first piece of geometry. And we'll go ahead and close that. Now the other part, the mating part, I want to do is a revolve. 
and you're always making the, the choices of how to do this geometry where this one wasn't too bad doing the stack up this one I would have to do some offsets and or create some planes and I can get all of this geometry in one revolve so that makes it a little bit um, a little bit happier <laughs> so on the front plane let's go into the sketch anytime we're doing a revolve we're going to go vertical infinite length and then we're going to just start the sketch always just kind of click out of it rather than to try back backing out of the horizontal and the construction line and all that so we go to the chamfer we can go up a little bit over a little bit and I'm not being too concerned if this gets too confusing or I start having problems with it I will do it in smaller segments and keep working on the geometry that way all right so putting this top tab in has some some issues i've done it both ways where i've just left it the nice thing about having this as a as a round uh, then we can um, um, build the hex over it and just tell it to go up to next if i leave it and build the hex going up it does the the same thing as cutting it away so just um some uh, some challenges to uh, to think about all right so major diameter of our m20 by 2 is 20 millimeters we have the 3 millimeter by 45 so since that was still selected we'll go 45 and if i reverse the sense that makes makes it a negative temporarily but it changes let's see which way that goes it changes the um, uh, the direction so let's see if it's still selected for the radius no it uh, kicked that out so we have three millimeters the 45 and then we're 23 from the bottom and going that way yeah i kind of expect it to do some strange things so it probably will invert and then our next piece uh, is from the top so Let's uh, get back into the, into the select and make sure that our region comes back. So we have five millimeters at the top. And then from the top to the groove goes 25. And we still have the five millimeter groove. So since those are design intent says that those will pretty much be the same. If I need to change them, then... Um, then I'll um, think about what um, which way I want to go with those six millimeter screws so collinear lines them up equal makes them the same size and then the last of the geometry oh, is the overall so let's pick for the 73 and we would go since these are able to move and this is able to move what do we have for a depth? Um, diameter of 15 on the inside. And I want to make sure if I go to that, I'm only going to get radio. If I go to the object, if I go to the center line, that's going to take me um, back into the diametral radial. Select, control, select, collinear. And looks like our last number, we'll just do the minor or the size of the hex of the inscribed circle of the uh, of the polygon and we'll call that good all right so features revolve and accept all right so on this we don't have a whole wizard we need to go into the cosmetic thread so i've added a cosmetic thread up here because i use it enough if you don't have one then you can go to the make sure you're in search commands if not, do a little pull down, go to commands, and we can start typing cosmetic, and then you would just left click and drag it, in this case to, I drag it to the features, I have drag it to the heads up display, so it's not, you know, it's not really critical, but if you use it enough, you'll want it somewhere a little more convenient, or possibly even add it to the, um, to the S yes key. All right, so on the insert, we're looking for annotations. If we go this route, 
hidden under annotations is our cosmetic thread. And when we switch to metric, it is a machine thread. It picked up the two and a half, but I want the two. And up to next should take it to the groove and the relief. So what I don't like about the show type is it adds that machine threads. Usually in the drawing, I want it to be more specific so that we can call out a class of fit if we need it. Um, machine threads doesn't tell me anything other than I'm either going to be able to run a die and um, make the thread or I'm going to, while I'm machining this on the lathe, I'm going to single point cut those threads. Alright, so for the cap, we want to go into the sketch and the polygon and we're doing a six-sided for our hex and inscribed will be fine because we want to make, well we could go tangent or we could just make them co-radial and then we'll pick a point and another point and the, and the origin to make those horizontal and then we can extrude. So an extrude into an extrude is up to the, um, is just, there's no net gain, it's all the, uh, the same geometry. I do want to go up to surface and then select. All right, so how do we get the uh, the chamfer on this it is going to depend on whether I put this geometry in line with this plane or with this plane. So we're going to do it both ways, and you pick which one uh, you prefer. So the um, um, the geometry then it's going to basically chamfer is not going to touch here, but it's going to knock the corner off there. So if I go to the front plane. This one, again, is a little more, more intuitive. Oh yeah, and we do have a vertical infinite length, and we'll go ahead and make it for construction because this is going to be a revolve cut. And then we're going to generate our little triangle. And no, I don't want the midpoint. All right, so our geometry then Let's see where the chamfer is called out since it goes back to, well, it's going to go back to the 25 millimeters. So let's just um, find that, uh, that sketch and we'll see if we can. Oh, and I put it on the other side. So why don't we just break that coincident? And that coincident, and then we should be able to drag. And oh, I think I did get that mixed up. All right, so let's go that way and that way. Now, did it give an angle? No. We'll we'll come up with something that uh, that looks good until I. Um, I run across that number. All right, so we want to go to that point, and then again, watching for the midpoint, and then because I have that um, that geometry, we'll go ahead and uh, select for it. If it was the circle or something else, then we might just do a um, um, a pierce or one of the other relations. So I'll go ahead with an angle, and we'll just give it 45 degrees from that point. Makes sense. And then we can do a revolve cut and end up with our shape. All right, so on this one then, we're going to um, suppress that so it doesn't interfere with plan B. We go to the right plane and go into the sketch. And now we're working on the outside. So center line infinite length, we'll get back, um, well, we do want that vertical. And we're going to bring that initial point back to the, um, to the geometry and go 45. Now, because this is extended past, as long as it stays extended past, 
I could put just about any number in there, and it's only going to cut what it inter, um, intersects with. All right, so same result, just uh, slightly different, and sometimes it uh, it makes sense to do one over, over the other. And um, really, if you pick that plane and realize you're this way, draw it that way, and if you're the other way, draw it the other way. All right, so this is going to be the um, the threaded screw. Well, those are kind of the same thing, so. Um, Let's see, I called it the threaded body, so let's go with the, um... All right, so we have our, have our geometry. We're gonna go ahead with the assembly and the drawing, and then optionally we'll look at some of the, um, uh, the additional things that I would wanna do with this design.